Hey guys, it's Blade again from Cardio Security, and today I'm back again with another head unit video. This one here is the DMX 8021 DAP. Okay, so the DMX8021, this is a revised model of the previous model they brought out, the DMX8020. Now, you may have seen on a few videos ago on our Cast YouTube channel that Raj was at a Kenwood product release where they were looking at a few new products and this was one of them. Now, we currently have stock of these now, so you can come and purchase one, uh, but to quickly run through the features in the unit, you're looking at wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, Bluetooth streaming, hands-free calls, DAB radio, a short chassis design, USB-C fast charge connection, and many, many other features. So let me unbox it. We'll go through all the physical features on the unit and then we'll turn it on and go through that. Okay, so this is the unit exploded on the table here. Just to quickly run through the parts that you would get in the box. First of all, you have the instruction manual and warranty card. Make sure you read through this if you get stuck. It's gonna give you all the answers you need. At the back of this, you will also have the removal keys for the cage that comes with the unit. Next to that, we have a GPS antenna. Now this is gonna plug in the back of the unit and usually sit up on your dash or on top of the unit, somewhere where it's gonna be able to get GPS reception. That's gonna give you a very accurate uh, location for your maps if you're on Waze or Google Maps for instance. This is your main harness so this is going to be plugged into the back of the unit and then into your vehicle or into the adapter for your vehicle depending what car you have. This is your USB connection. Now as I've mentioned the USB on this unit is different. This is USB type C. Uh, so rather than your usual USB extension you'd find it is a USB type C. Now don't be worried, obviously, Apple users are not USB Type-C. They do give you an adapter to go from USB-C to normal USB, but this will allow fast charging. We'll get to that in a second. Next, you've got your Bluetooth mic, standard issue Kenwood Bluetooth mic. It's gonna go up on your headlining. And then lastly, you have the trim that goes around the unit once it's fitted. And then we can go into the unit itself. Okay, so this is the unit itself. Now, before I go any further, let's do the lovely, exciting bit of peeling the plastic off the face. Get rid of that. So here we have it. So if you're familiar with the previous model, the 8020, looking at it from front ways here, there is no real difference. You've got a seven inch capacitive touchscreen as before. You've got your row of buttons along the bottom which control your volume and your home button and other bits and bobs like that. And if I turn it to the side, then you'll see the difference. If you know the previous model, the unit would have come out to probably about here. Now this is a shallow chassis design. So Ken would have listened to feedback from customers and ourselves and they've made this a shallow unit. Now it's going to be a lot easier for installers um, and yourself when it comes to fitting the unit. That way you don't have a massive jumble of wires trying to stop you from fitting it and pushing it back. And also some vehicles can't take a full chassis. So it's kind of opened a few doors in terms of installation. Now on the back of the unit, it's a bit more complicated. It's quite um, jumbled, I would say, just because it's in a smaller area. But I'll quickly go through it. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see all these holes and bits and bobs here. This is just your fan to keep the unit nice and cool. You don't need to really worry about that too much. Over here is where all the magic happens. So this plug here is your main uh, ISO connection. Well, this is the main harness going to the ISO. So that's where you plug the unit in. So here where you have all your yellow RCA connections, this is for all your video inputs and outputs. So this unit can take three camera inputs. So you can take a, a front, a rear, and then an additional camera if you'd like, and then you have AV in and out. So over here are your audio outputs. These are your pre-outs. So you have a front, rear, and sub pre-out at five volts. So good voltage RCA outputs here. This is your FM antenna input. So this is for AM and FM. You may need an adapter for your vehicle, just bear that in mind. Now up here, this white connection here is for the Kenwood specific dash cam. Now this will allow you to link the DVR N520 dash cam and view it directly from the unit. So that's handy. This next to it is your microphone input. So the microphone that I showed you earlier, that will plug directly into there. This connection here is for a vehicle specific patch lead connection, usually for Volkswagens. 
So this is your GPS antenna input. This is where you would connect that uh, GPS antenna I showed you at the start. Uh, this is a connection for an additional or a different steering wheel control input. Majority of the time you'll be using the one from the harness itself, but if you have a different connection, that'll plug in there. Uh, this gold pin is for your DAB uh, antenna. Now you will need to purchase a separate antenna for that, but unless your vehicle already has one. And then the last things to show you up here is behind this little panel here, you have a micro HDMI connection and your USB. So the previous unit had a normal size HDMI and two USBs. Now, because they've made it a shallow unit, they couldn't quite fit two USBs and an HDMI. So they've made it a micro HDMI. So make sure if you're gonna use HDMI, you use a micro to normal size adapter. And also obviously your USB is a single wire connection. So this guard here is just to hold your cables in place so it doesn't get tugged out or anything like that. So you just unscrew this black screw here and then lift this up, pop your cables in, and then screw it back down and it's locked in place. So let's get onto the kind of inside of the unit. Let's get it powered up and I'll show you from there. Okay, so this is the unit when you first turn it on. So you're gonna be displayed here with your kind of setup menu. Uh, we're not gonna go through that too much, but we're just gonna turn the demo mode off and finish. Now this warning will come up every time you turn the unit on because it is a multimedia screen. Now you can just tick the automatically remove this message after 10 seconds and then click agree. So this is the main home screen of the unit. Now again, if you're familiar with the last model, it's exactly the same, I'll be honest. It's no real different. Um, touch responsiveness is just as good. Um, the 8020 was one of my favorite units, so I'm no one get along with this. But yeah, we'll go through the features quickly. So as you can see lit up at the bottom here, you have your volume, attention, home, menu, uh, app select, and camera button. Now this is completely RGB, as you can see it changing colors here now. So you can set it to be whatever color you like. Now on the actual screen itself, down the bottom, you've got your digital radio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and telephone. Now in digital radio, you've got obviously, you could search for your stations obviously we're not going to be able to pick up anything but you search for your station press and hold your preset that will save that and then you can go back and then go into whatever you need to if we come back out of here press home now i'll show you the carplay and android auto working in a second but in terms of the telephone again pay your phone and it will show you all your contacts and your call list and then if we click this button here this will show us all of our available applications now this unit does come with wireless Android mirroring. So you can connect your Android phone and wirelessly mirror, mirror the screen together and watch Netflix, YouTube, whatever you want. Obviously not whilst you're driving. Uh, this is your normal FM radio. So exactly the same as DAB in terms of layout, but obviously FM. Bluetooth audio, again, pair your phone up and play your music from there. Same with your iPod. If you're using an iPhone, it will show you an iPod format. Uh, now USB. Obviously, if you have a USB device connected to play music or video, that will go through there. Now, HDMI, again, HDMI connection on the back, make sure you buy the adapter uh, or a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter for your phone. Obviously, that's sold separately, does not come with the unit. AV input is for your video and audio inputs, if you've got a secondary input for that. And you can also put the unit in standby from here. And then we have settings over to the right here. So the settings are quite self-explanatory. You can go through and change the background, speech quality, incoming call volume, your display, clock, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can literally make it your own. So as well as being a good quality head unit to be able to use your phone for CarPlay and Android Auto, this is also a very good audio file head unit. So you've got stuff like your 13 band EQ you can play around with and make it your own. And you've got sound effects and you can go in set time alignment. It's a, a very in-depth unit. You can do a lot with it without it being too complicated. Now, one other thing to show you, if you're in the home screen here and you want to quickly get into that, say your settings, uh, rather than clicking there and then clicking there and then going there, you can go home screen, Click menu and this will give you a quick drop down 
and then audio settings, and you're already there. Same thing goes for your normal settings. Or let's say you want to switch to DAB. Makes it very easy for you. And then lastly, thing to show you, same as the previous model, but you can customize the widgets on the background here. So let's say I wanted to move this over here, and then this over here. That's how you would do that, so just press and hold, and then you could move it over, or you could get rid of it altogether. And then you could put something else in there, do a drop down, you could put a parametric EQ, press and hold, drop that there. That'll play along when you're playing your music. Obviously, we're not playing anything now, so it's not showing up. But yeah, that's really handy to have. So you could play, let's say, you could have that background as your car, and then that as your time, and then that as your EQ. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to connect your Android phone to the unit via wireless CarPlay. So first thing you wanna do is open up the Bluetooth connections app on your phone and try and pair to the unit. Now, usually I find on these Kenwood units, it's quite easy to do that via clicking your menu button and then going into setup and then, and then connection and then device list and then click the plus button there. So not, not only is your phone looking for that, this is looking for your phone. Now, it can take a little while in this showroom because we have 10,000 things in here running on Bluetooth, but we'll hopefully find it pretty easily. Let's have a look. As you can see, quite a few devices. Let's just scan for it again. There we go, DMX8021 dabs. So you wanna pair that, accept all the prompts. Takes a second to connect for the first time. There we go. It's now going to go into Android Auto. Uh, allow the contact sync, and there we go. That is Android Auto connected wirelessly. Probably one of the easiest units to connect for Android Auto, I would say. Um, so if you're not aware how Android Auto works, these are all the available apps that you can use whilst your phone is off and you can play around with on your head unit. So let's say I wanted to play some music. I can go into my Spotify, play my music, and then I can go back. And then let's say go into Google Maps and then go to Tesco's and get some dinner. And it's gonna take me long and play my music and I can then go back, let's say, I wanted to make a phone call to someone, I can click on my phone book and send, uh, give someone a call. I will send a message via voice command. Very, very easy and simple to use. Okay, so we're gonna show you the same thing for Apple CarPlay now. So we're gonna go onto the unit, hit that plus button there, and then we're gonna search for this unit. So let's just have a look, 10 million things on it. There we go, DMX8021, click on that. Pair, yes, allow. Okay, now for as you can see, the Apple CarPlay requests that you have the GPS antenna connected. This is, I believe, for uh, more accurate maps. So we're gonna quickly connect that now and we'll show you that working. Okay, so we've connected the GPS antenna. We just basically need to repair the unit now. So if we... Okay, so we have the phone connected for Apple CarPlay now. So again, wireless, pretty simple. The only uh, kind of difference with the CarPlay is you have to have that GPS antenna connected. I mean, even with the Android Auto, it's a benefit to have that connected uh, to give you more accurate map location. Now, again, if you're not familiar with the Apple CarPlay, it's exactly the same concept as Android Auto, just with the Apple apps. So you can have your navigation, you can have your music, and make a phone call, go into your settings, your Spotify, Waze, Google Maps, whenever you need to use, it's there. Um, obviously, only the legal things that you're allowed to use whilst you're driving.
Now in terms of Apple devices, unfortunately the mirroring is not available wirelessly. Now there is a way that you can mirror an iPhone to this unit, but that's via the HDMI. Now because you need an adapter to go to micro HDMI in this unit, it can become a little bit complicated. Uh, now bear with me, so you're going to need essentially a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter, an HDMI lead, and then an HDMI to lightning adapter for your phone. <laughs> so it's quite a lot, but it will allow you to screen mirror your phone to the unit. So if you want to go through the hassle of purchasing all that stuff and making it work, it will work. All you would need to do is go into your features and hit HDMI, and then your phone screen will come up on this screen. Okay, so that was the rundown of the brand new Kenwood 8021 dabs. Now, as I've mentioned, this is a fantastic unit for anyone that would need to use for CarPlay, the Android Auto, for someone that's looking to use it for audio file. I mean, this unit will play high-res audio, FLAC files, WAV files from your phone. It's fantastic. Really, really good unit. Packs a punch in a very small footprint, which makes installation very easy. I can't really think of a bad thing to say about this unit. It's definite upgrade from the 8020. I mean, if you've already got the 8020 in your vehicle, whether it's worth the additional, however much this unit is, just for the fact of it being shallow and the, uh, the USB, that's completely up to you. But if you don't already have this unit, it's definitely something to look into. Um, like I say, it packs a punch in a very, very small footprint. Uh, now to quickly mention, obviously I said the USB is uh, USB type C. Now this means it's also fast charging. So if you do connect your phone, let's say it's an iPhone or an Android, it will fast charge the phone rather than just being the usual 1.5 amp, this is a three amp charger. So it's a much faster, it's not gonna damage your phone in any way. So as I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, these are currently now in stock, ready to go. So if you're looking to purchase this unit, uh, we do have it. Welcome to come down or place an order online. These are currently sat at 649.99 on our website as of today's filming. Uh, so make sure you grab one as soon as you can because we don't know whether we're going to be holding on to these for very long because I know they're going to be popular. So this is definitely a unit that I would recommend to any of my customers that have the budget to go for it first of all um, and are looking for the features it provides. I mean it's, it's a fantastic bang for buck unit. Um, now if you're familiar with the fact that we're getting a shop project car I think this would probably be a perfect option for that also. Uh, it's a small lightweight chassis with all the features that you would ever need. So if you're interested in seeing how the unit works, we may have it installed in a shop project car in the near future, maybe, we don't know. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.